Easy peeps, welcome back to another episode of Started From The Bottom, The Road To Glory. We have Weekend League with the One Nation and we probably made our first mistake <laughs> is we sold Taliska. Now we did make, what, 50k on Taliska, but I think it made the team worse. I genuinely do and you can also see we sold another Philippe Anderson there and we're just going to claim last week's rewards are up to 133 but i decided to sell to this guy because i just thought well i can make 50k here i'm going i'm only going to get what even if i play really well a maximum 45k for playing 45 games and I, i've made that in what 30 seconds by selling to this guy it just made sense to sell him now because of that we do have to fill the void of what we have created by selling him so we decided to pick up the Firmino. Mm, yeah it was okay eventually you'll see but yeah, we paid 67,000 coins for him. I got the path to glory just in case he decides to start for uh, Brazil in some games. And I also picked up a Fred for 20 and an Alexandro to bring on as a sub for 35. So for the price of the what we sold the Talisca for, we've got three players there. And I thought that was important. But then we go into <laughs> the foot champions. And even in the first game, it's very apparent to see that our defence is just not good enough. So we've done our best all week to try and find a solution for the team in terms of playing divisions and stuff. But now, obviously, you're playing a higher calibre of opponent and you'll see the stats of the 20 games that we're going to show in this episode. You'll see the stats of the teams and stuff that we played and, and what have you. And it's all very well. We were scoring. That's not a problem. So getting, you know, Ronaldo in the mix and uh, Willian and Firmino, that isn't a problem whatsoever. But majority of the teams that we faced also had Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Icon Henri, just fast, fast players. And unfortunately, our defence just couldn't, couldn't handle it. Uh, I mean, Roberto Carlos did okay, but obviously because Roberto Carlos is a high high and the way that we're playing it, we want him to be able to push up and, you know, and do whatever so sometimes obviously there's holes behind Roberto Carlos but in our normal team people like Maldini or Ferdinand cover that hole unfortunately with the players that we had they just couldn't cover the hole that Roberto Carlos or even Perez are leaving so we're kind of struggling this team here is kind of give or take one of the worst teams that we faced believe it or not this is literally one of the worst teams. Now, the problem again with this One Nation thing is a lot of people have just gone, do you know what? What's the point? I've worked hard all year to be able to save up and get my team that I want. And now you're forcing me to play with a team, not for one week, not for two weeks, which we thought it was originally. They've actually added a third week, which means in their heads, they're probably going to add a fourth week and make it run for the entirety of the World Cup. So a whole month at this stage of FIFA, when FIFA's pretty much dying as it is, the World Cup mode hasn't really exploded because they've given everybody the option for icons and stuff a bit too early. Team of the season was just a bit too accessible. So everybody's rocking team of the season um, cards in their normal team. And then because of the World Cup mode, the price and the price of the players and the market has took an absolute dip. So the people that have paid six, seven hundred thousand coins for a team of the season card, that's now worth two fifty, three hundred thousand coins. So there's no way those people are going to sell them to be able to get players that are one nation. And really, people just haven't got coins to be able to get the actual mega teams. So the only players that are left on the weekend league are players that have got a lot of coins, pump a lot of money in. And have got super mega teams or have just been like lucky or clever or whatever with the icons that they've done and just somehow managed to get the the Pele's, the Ronaldinho's, the Ronaldo's, the Roberto Carlos. It's basically all of one nation or the people that have just got lucky in the, the pat pulls that they got from team of the season and stuff like that where they managed to get your upgrades like your Griezmann's and you, they was just lucky where they managed to somehow luckily have a lot of nations but a lot of us have got teams where we've got one from brazil one from france one from holland one from england it's a lot to be able to be get yourself a mega team with such stringent rules and because of that you're either facing now the players that finish high in foot champions so they've got a lot of coins or or teams with super mega teams i mean if we look at this team here this isn't necessarily we look at this team and we think that we can actually take this team on 
and then you get the gameplay which just completely lets you down. No, I don't think this is a penalty, unfortunately. I'm not even, I didn't press a button to control him, to tackle him, to, to do anything. And this was given. Now, if it's a penalty, it's a penalty. It is what it is, man. But as you can see, all we're doing is moving Roberto Carlos over to cover the hole. And he barely touches him. And that, he doesn't even, I don't press an A, I don't press a B, I don't press any button, an X to tackle. No button whatsoever to tackle. It's just for some reason, the game at that decision decided to think that that was a penalty. So we can see the penalty and then we go down and lose. And that's the only goal of the game. We've got seven shots on target. He has some kind of super keeper match, which is expected in some games of FIFA. And then we just get another loss from just like silliness. And it's just, yeah, it's frustrating, man. It is frustrating. These teams, as you can see here, is just a selection of some of them. Now, you can see they're weak in defence. We're weak in defence. So the games are absolute goal fest. We was going to six sixes, seven sixes, five fours. And I was losing some. I was winning some. I was going to extra time. It's just crazy. Look at this team here. That is a solid team overall. There's just not a lot we can do. These are the kind of teams we're facing. We've got Ronaldo, Neymar, Ronaldinho running at 76 pace Marquinhos. We just can't do anything about it. And it's just crazy, man. You could look, Ronaldinho, Firmino, team of the season. Ronaldo, um, uh, Alan, Taliska. It's just there's a lot of fast players all running. Yes, we're scoring a few as well, but we're conceding an absolute shed load. We've got Henri, Vieira, we've got Desailly, we've got uh, Martial who's quick, we've got Umbop running at us. We just we just couldn't contain the players, man. We just couldn't contain them. We was coming up against some good teams, we, like like this, for instance, that we managed to take a winner against. He's got a lot of promise running, running at us, Depay running at us, Vaginkel and stuff like that. But then when we come up against the super mega Brazilian teams like this one, who's got 97 Neymar running at us, Ronaldo... Firmino, he brings on Ronaldo, he's got um, William running at us, or teams like this where he's got 96 Griezmann, Henri, Fakia and Conte all running at us. It's a lot for our centre-backs to be able to cover it. Now, in the first 20 games, we played nine Brazil teams, six French teams, three German teams and two Dutch teams. So you can see nearly 50% of the teams we played were Brazilian. And I'd say eight of those all had the 96 Ronaldo and probably seven of those all had the 97 Neymar, man. We were struggling against Neymar, Ronaldinho and Ronaldo. Our defence just couldn't hold up. And honestly, our, our midfield was weak as well. And another problem we had is we did play the 20. You can see we got to top 100 with 47 games. That's very low. That's because we played so many games. We played 20 games in 10 hours. Tomorrow's episode where we carry on was still on the same day as well. Because I wanted to get as many games out on the Friday because I want to watch the World Cup. It was Father's Day on Sunday as well. I don't want to play 40 games. I'm sorry. We kind of cost ourselves a lot as well because we played so many games in such a short amount of time. We hit top 100 really quickly because there's only the elite players that are still playing it. So then we're coming up against super players all the time. So what we did, we ended up selling that to Liska and Anderson, which you've seen. We got rid of Neymar for 84,000. We made 30k on Neymar. So by selling to Liska, uh, the Philip Anderson and the Neymar, we've made nearly 100k profit. So we need to go and fill that void. So what we're doing there is we're going to start with Alex Sandro initially. And we've also purchased, for seven games, we purchased the Alan. Now, honestly, from the 81 Alan to this Alan, I don't think it's worth an extra 140k. This card was worth, what, 75k, 80k like two weeks ago. But we thought we'd try it. So what we're going to do is we will probably sell this. Even if I take a couple of thousand coin loss, if you can see there, we're pretty much within the same amount of money. So we'll probably just lose a little bit of tax by a couple of thousand coins. I just wanted to see if that could hold the midfield a little bit more. And it doesn't. So in game, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at William and Ronaldo up top with Firmino at Cam. And then we play Sandro as an LCM, Fred as an RCM. And then we've got the Alan as CDM. But we will be replacing with our 80, uh, 83 Alan, who's got 81 pace. We will be playing him there and we will be selling this Alan because I just don't think it's worth the extra coins. Our problem is our goalkeeper, 
our two centre backs that do not have any pace and the fact our left back and our right back are high high so when they push up to help us which is what we want them we want them to do that unfortunately because we haven't got the pace at centre backs we are kind of struggling with being able to cover the holes that the left back and the right back are, are like creating from pushing up so it's difficult man it's difficult honestly if i can get 20 wins this weekend i'm gonna class that as an absolute win man you can see yeah i don't know i don't know i don't want to waste 200,000 coins trying to make this team good and then in two weeks time or whenever it is we won't be playing any of the players so we, i think i've just got to take the losses if i can if i can beat some good teams i'm going to try and beat some good teams if i if i can try and minimalize some losses i'm going to try and minimalize some losses i'm just going to try and do whatever i can try and do but honestly the the back three defensively the goalkeeper and the two center backs are costing us now marcelo is pretty decent but because he hasn't got the I'd, I'd say Marcelo needs to be the worst pace centre-back you have or something like that. So if he's the leading pace centre-back, we're kind of struggling. And honestly, we played some superb teams. I played a... Uh, I think I played Ike Egan's in the first 10 games or something. He ended up going into Manchester and playing the Global Series. He beat us. Uh, and then in the next episode, in the next batch of 20 games, we play... Uh, a fellow YouTuber, we play another top 100 player, we play just all because we're on the, the top 100 leaderboard now, we're struggling so we're going to keep playing these higher paced teams and unfortunately when we're coming up against 97 Neymar and stuff like that we've, we're just not good enough defensively but that is it for today's episode so we finish on 13, if I can get 7 wins out the next 20 man, I'm going to be happy I don't care, I know it's not the best I apologise but we're struggling with this team, man. We are struggling. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in a bit.